I chose to do fencing because since I was a very, very little kid, I really was always fascinated by it. One of my friends actually got me interested. All she said was, you get to hit people with swords. It was just something I'd always seen in the movies and I thought it'd be really fun to try and actually understand. I wanted to learn how to sword fight, so I, in, in high school I took fencing and now I'm here teaching it, so. So I came here, I took the beginners class and just fell in love with it and I never looked back from there. <laughs> There are three different events in modern Olympic fencing. There is foil, saber, and epee. Foil is, is when, you, when you watch fencing and they show you all the, the cool, pretty things people can do in fencing, that's foil. Foil is a, um, well actually, foil is the, a traditional training weapon for epee. It is a long, square, thin blade. Uh, with a very small bell guard because hands are not target area. In foil, your target area is your torso minus your arms. So anything from, you know, basically the crotch up is, is foil target area. Your goal is to uh, fence within the rules of right of way, which is determined by whoever extends their arm first, whoever can avoid a parry, if someone takes it's Right of way is a little complicated, but it determines how you can score. And if you have right of way and you hit on the silver target area, which is called a lame, you, uh, your light goes off and you get the point. Epe is the traditional dueling weapon. Um, it's based off of rapier fencing. It is a, the rules of Epe are no rules of right of way, which determines how you can score. And um, there are no, no limits to target area. Full body is target area, it's just whoever hits first gets the point. Saber is a little more, is a little like foil. It's a right of way weapon, but firstly, it is done with an edge weapon like this. And what happens is you run a current through the blade, and your goal is to, within the rules of right of way, hit someone on the full torso target area minus the crotch, like you could hit in, in um, foil. All you really have to do with the saber is touch the gray lame on any, on any part of it, and it changes the voltage, and you get your light goes off. So. My favorite aspect of it is that it's, it's a sport that really combines both the uh, physical aspects and also strategy, uh, tactical thinking, and so forth. Uh, you can win not just, you know, it's not important just to be faster or stronger than your opponent, but it's also important to be able to outthink them. It's not really a running sport. It's about balance and agility and speed and almost grace at times. So it's just, it's more artsy, and I tend to be more of an artsy kind of person than athletic. Not that it's not athletic. It's as much mental as it is physical. You know, like, it requires a lot of thought power. I love the fact that there's so much thought that goes into it. It's not just, you know, whoever has the best skill can win. I mean, I, I've beaten people way better than myself just because I've, I've outthought them or I have, you know, one aspect of my fencing that I can do a little bit better than they can. And so I, I love the fact that there's, you know, there's so much room to be better in so many different areas. It is a sport that involves more thought than you would think. <laughs> the way it looks now, fencing seems nothing like sword fighting to a lot of people. We started off with these, which a lot of people probably would think more as a saber. This is from 1750. It's a, uh, it's called a tulwar, which is a, it's a one-handed cavalry sword. So it would have been used on a horse. You would hold it as such and swing it down off of your horse. And that's one of the main reasons that it's curved. If you think about it, a, a curved weapon, when you swing it, it will, uh, it will pass through your opponent instead of getting stuck in them, which is kind of grotesque, but true. So that's, that's how the saber all started. In the, in the late 1800s, the saber became a dueling weapon instead of a cavalry weapon. 
which means all of a sudden uh, it was not used in the same way. It wasn't used from horseback, and that made them a lot lighter. This is an actual dueling saber from the from the 1800s. It's actually an Italian saber. Um, this one was from World War One. It was never issued, but the idea behind this saber is it's much lighter and it's and it's used while you're uh, while you're standing instead of on horseback. So it can be used in a, uh, in a menagerie of ways. This is a modern fencing saber. And obviously this blade couldn't have ever been a cavalry weapon. It's too small, it's too light, and it wouldn't work that way. But it actually replicates the dueling swords relatively well. And, uh, and we use it as such. Fencing has been around for a very long time. Um, it's just starting to gain popularity in America. I mean, um, in the Olympics, for example, America hasn't won anything very, you know, anything with any regularity up until recently. But it's still a really young sport in America. It's gaining popularity. Individual fencing institutions are, are being set up all over the place. Um, uh, the fall of the Soviet Union has really affected this um, because so many Soviet fencers and coaches are coming to America to coach because they get paid so much more. It's, it's still really new here and it just hasn't caught on in popularity. We actually find a lot of people in America can't fence as well as the Europeans because we don't watch it as kids. It's kind of like baseball. You can go out in the backyard and you can pick up and play baseball because you watch it on ESPN all the time. You can't pick up and play fencing because you don't know the rules and reading them from a book isn't the same as watching it when you're through your whole childhood and, and knowing, you know, precisely what. Everyone's just really nice and supportive. We're a, we're a very close team. I mean, we hang out all the time. I mean, my best friends here in IU are fencers. Everyone's friendly. We get we have very friendly competition going on in the club in every different weapon. Every weapon thinks they're better than the other. The club is lots of fun. We have parties all the time. We do all kinds of fun things. Like, there's some really great people here, a lot of great characters. Uh, it's always fun to hang around here. It's always fun to show up. The people make the sport. and. You can go to competitions and see people from across the country and you wouldn't have anything in common with them, but you're stuck in the same gym for 12 hours, sweating and poking people with swords. So you make instant friendships. <laughs> 